Hey everybody, um, today we're working on 4.2, the mean value theorem. And this is something like what we did before. It's f of b minus f of a over b minus a equal f prime of c. So your a and b are from your interval. And then the C is the value that we choose. So for number one, we have f of x equal x squared plus 2x minus 1. And the interval is from 0 to 1. So um, what we want is f of 1 and f of 0. Let's get those first. So f of 1 is 1 squared plus 2 times 1 minus 1. Um, that gives us 2. Because the 1's cancel and you have 2. And f of 0 would be 0 plus 0 minus 1, which is negative 1. Then we want to do f of 1 minus f of 0 over 1 minus 0. <clears throat> and that would be 2 minus a negative 1 all over 1, which gives you 3. Now our next step is to do your derivative of the f function. So your derivative of x squared would be 2x and your derivative of 2x is 2, and the derivative of negative 1 is 0. So then your next step would just be um, solve. You have 2x plus 2 equal to 3. So then 2x is 1 and x is 1 half. So that's your answer. And you know it's a reasonable answer because it's between your 0 and 1. So you want to check for your reasonableness. Our next one is number 3. And on this we have f of x equal x plus 1 over x. And we're going from 1 half to 2. So we shouldn't have any negative answers for number 3 in this case, since we're going from 1 half to 2. So we want f of 2. So that would be 2 plus a half, which is basically um, 2 and a half or 5 halves. And on f of 1 half, that would be 1 half plus 1 over 1 half which is also two and a half and five halves. So um, we're doing f of two minus f of one half over two minus a half. So we get five halves minus five halves over, think of two as four halves. So four halves minus one half would be three halves. And our numerator cancels out, so you get 0. Now our step is to get your derivative of f, and that be 1. Well, let's write out the function first in a different form. Um, the plus 1 over x is the same as plus x to the negative 1. And so now, it's easier to take your derivative in that form because you can bring your negative 1 in front and then to say x and then negative 2. So this is 1 minus 1 over x squared. So now you want to set these equal to each other. 1 minus 1 over x squared equals 0. And the best approach on this one, I think, is to add um, this term and keep the 1 where it is. So you end up with positive 
then you want to multiply by x squared. So you get x squared equal 1. Multiply x squared here and here. So on this side it cancels. And if you have x squared is 1, then x is plus and minus 1. Um, again, going back to our interval, it was 1 half to 2. So based on the interval, use x equal positive 1. So that's your answer for number 3. Next one is number 5, and we have f of x equals x cubed minus x squared, and our interval is from negative 1 to 2. So we want to find f of 2 and f of negative 1. So f of 2 would be 2 cubed minus 2 squared. 8 minus 4 is 4, and f of negative 1 would be negative 1 cubed minus negative 1 squared. Make sure you pay attention to your parentheses on this. Um, you're going to have negative 1 minus a positive 1. Um, the negative 1 squared is positive 1. We still have a negative in front of that, and so we get negative 2. So we're going to want f of 2 minus f of negative 1 over 2 minus negative 1. This gives us um, 4 minus negative 2 all over 2 plus 1. So that gives us 6 thirds, which is 2. Our next step is take your derivative, and the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Remember, you bring your exponent down and then decrease the power, and then this becomes 2x. So 3x squared minus 2x. Our next step is to set this equal to this. So we have 3x squared minus 2x equal 2. Sometimes you may end up with something that's factorable. Um, sometimes you may be able to use your calculator, but make sure you have an um, exact answer. Meaning not a decimal that's rounded. And uh, this one is not factorable. And so we have to use our quadratic formula, and a is 3, b is negative 2, and c is negative 2. So we're using our quadratic formula. x equal negative b plus or minus the long square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So you're going to do minus a negative 2, which is positive 2, plus or minus the long square root. Negative 2 squared, it's like negative 2 times negative 2, positive 4. Minus 4 times a, which is 3, times c, which is negative 2, all over 2 times 3. So for this one, we go 2 plus or minus the square root I'm going to type in the stuff underneath the square root sign and I get 28. 4 minus 4 times 3 times negative 2. So I get 28 all over 
over 6. So remember, um, as a side note, the square root of 28 would be the same thing as square root of 4 times square root of 7. So that's 2 square root of 7. And so this turns into 2 plus or minus 2 square root of 7 over 6. And then since all of those are even, then it cancels. You get 1 plus or minus square root of 7 over 3. Just out of curiosity, let's figure out what uh, those decimals are. I know we couldn't come up with our decimals on our own. Those are not ones you easily recognize. Okay, so the first one is approximately negative 0.55. What I'm doing is I'm seeing if both are valid answers. Um, so does negative 0.55 fall in the interval from negative 1 to 2? Yes, it does. So the first one worked. Um, and then for the other one, Take that same expression and change this to plus. Oops. And there I get um, 1.22 does fall under 2, and so that's good also. So both of these values work. So both are in the interval from negative 1 to 2. Next one's number seven. And on this one, it says, which of the functions satisfy the hypotenuses of the mean value theorem and which do not give reasons for your answers? So for number seven, our function is x to the two thirds and it's going from negative 1 to 8. Again, these are the directions for it. Which of the functions satisfy the hypothesis of the mean value theorem and which do not? So what we want to do is um, see whether you can get the derivative or not, and if it's valid at every point within that interval. So your derivative is 2 thirds x to the negative 1 third, because we um, decrease by 1. So that gives you um, 2 over 3 cube root of x. Okay, so right there you may notice um, that if x equals 0, it's undefined. 
If you have a zero in your denominator, then it's not going to work. Um, you might want to graph your derivative. Two divide by parentheses three cube root of x. So your function looks like this, sort of looks like a rational function. Um, it's just shifted down a little bit. And um, it has a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. Vertical asymptote at x equals 0. Well, with that being the case, then um, it does not meet the conditions. does not meet the conditions since it's not differentiable at x equals 0. So it does not meet the conditions and it's not differentiable. I was just looking at this. Even though our brackets are here, we, we are to put parentheses here on purpose. Um, so here, use your parentheses in order to satisfy the hypoth hypoth <laughs> hypothesis. It would have to be differentiable at every point um, in the interval, but not including those endpoints it would have to be differentiable at every point not including the endpoints. So that's why I have parentheses instead. So um, number nine, <clears throat> this one shows f of x equal to the square root x times 1 minus x, and we're going from 0 to 1. Okay, I think the easiest way to take your derivative on this is to distribute and then um, work from there. If you'd like to try it a different way, you can. x times 1 is x, x times negative x is negative x squared. And then that would be equivalent to x minus x squared to the 1 half power. Your root is 2, that's your denominator, and you're not raising it to any power, so that's why there's a 1. So for your f prime of x, you take your 1 half, put it in front, put this exact same thing, x minus x squared. Then remember, you have to take your derivative of the inside, which would be 1 minus 2x. So if we graph this one, um, this would not have any problems from 0 to 1. And so um, it does meet the conditions. It does meet the conditions. And it's continuous for every point.
m01 with brackets and differentiable for every point in 0, 1. So that completely meets the, the conditions. So it has to be continuous, which it is, and it has to be differentiable in the open interval, and it is. Okay, our next one is number 11. And on this one we have f of x equal to piecewise function x squared minus x when it's going from negative 2 less than or equal to x less than or equal to negative 1. And it's 2x squared minus 3x minus 3 when it's going from negative 1 less than x less than or equal to 0. Looks like to me the best thing to do would be um, to graph this. This is your original function. You remember how to do piecewise functions? It's f1 of x, and then we're going to use this button to the left of um, the open book. And then we're going to find the part that has two sections, which is that one. And we have x squared minus x and 2x squared minus 3x minus 3. Okay, I just adjusted the lighting a little bit. Um, so there's your piecewise parts, and now we need the intervals. So we have negative 2. Um, the next part is less than or equal to, and so we'd have to go to where it says equal and do control equal. And that's where we're going to have to change this to be less than or equal to x, and then less than or equal to negative 1. And for this one, we have negative 1 less than x less than or equal to 0. OK, so this is our original function kind of looks weird, but it has parts. So uh, the main thing is we see that at negative 1, it's still continuous. OK, so that was the graph of the original. Um, the next part is we need to take our derivative. And we have 2x minus 1, and we have 4x minus 3. So now let's graph that. I'm going to um, abbreviate this. So notice I did put the parentheses on purpose because it's an inequality. So um, that was our original function in blue. And then our other function, we go to here and 2x minus 1, 4x minus 3. 
we're going to have negative 2 less than or equal to x um, less than or equal to negative 1 and then we have negative 1 less than x less than or equal to 0. So our derivative, which is the red function, um, doesn't touch. So I graph the original in blue. And this one was red. Um, and so this had a, a break in the graph. and it's not uh, differentiable. Okay, so what we have is um, that it does not meet the conditions. Does not meet the conditions and it's not, is not um, differentiable at x equal negative 1. In parentheses, negative 2, 0. So that would be the, the problem with that one. So that's number 11. Our next one is number 19. And these say show that the functions have exactly one zero. in the interval. So uh, for number 19 we have f of x equal x to the fourth plus 3x plus 1 and the interval is from negative 2 to negative 1. So first we're going to do f of negative 1, then f of negative 2. So f of negative 1 um, would be negative 1 to the fourth plus 3 times negative 1 plus 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 minus 3 is negative 1. And f of negative 2 would be negative 2 to the 4th plus 3 times negative 2 plus 1. Negative 2 raised to the 4th plus 3 times negative 2 plus 1. This gives you 11. Okay, so since you have a change in sign, since the sign changes, from f of b to f of a, um, we know from the intermediate value theorem the intermediate value theorem 
that it has at least one zero. in that interval. Okay, for the next part on the same problem, um, we start with our interval being negative 2 um, less than x less than negative 1, and you want to work towards your derivative. Um, the derivative we know would be 4x cubed plus 3. Um, from taking your 4, bringing it in front, decreasing the power, and going to 3. So what they want you to do on this is start working towards that. And so what we start is cube every term. Cube every term. And so negative 2 cubed would be negative 8. And then you'd have x cubed, and then you'd have negative 1. Now what they want you to do is multiply every term by 4. And so uh, that would turn into negative 32. And the next thing we need to do is add 3 to every term. So this gives us negative 29 less than 4x cubed plus 3, less than negative 1. So um, let's talk a little bit more about this. So um, this one, of course, was less than 0. This one was greater than 0 because that's negative and that's positive. And f prime of x is less than 0 for negative 2 less than x less than negative 1. Um, what that implies is that f of x is decreasing on negative 2, negative 1. And based on that, we know it's not um, increasing and decreasing, it's just decreasing. So we know f of x equals 0 um, has exactly one solution in negative 2, negative 1. Okay, that's the end of number 19.